Superior, Wisconsin. Universe on the Inception Radio Network, brought to you by the Northern Wisconsin Paranormal Society Limited and the Northwoods Paranormal Resource Center here in Rylander, Wisconsin. We're your hosts, Kevin and Jennifer Malik. Hello, everybody. And hello to everyone in the IRN chat room. We look forward to your questions and comments as always. IRNchat.com is the link for the chat room, so come join us there. Tonight we'll be talking to author of The Illusion of Us esoteric historian Matt LaCroix. But before we bring him on, we'd like to take a minute and do our weekly shout-outs. Shout-outs go to those individuals and groups who share our show banners every week. And because and because the moral powers that be, because the moral powers that be um, behind social media are now uh, waging war against three-thinking three shows like ours, like Paraversal Universe, um, they've increasingly... Uh, made it more difficult to advertise shows the way we're accustomed to, which is why your shares become all that much more important. And because of those shares, we are still reaching people, and the numbers are still there, uh, which proves ultimately that we, the people, the masses, still do have the power. Uh, so thank you kindly, everyone. Uh, remember, censorship at any level is wrong. Okay, so who do we have this week? All right, so this week we have Walt Christos, Thoughts of Christos, Cindy Lou of Bizarro World, Charles Hahn, Illusion of Us, Arm During the Point, Alan Longset, Marilyn Borscht, Debbie Warren, Lawrence Demiza, Bob Siegel, Don and Brent Elmer, Becky Sibley, A Quest, A Quest for Truth, Patrick Joseph Duche, Jason Bland, Jamie Demlos of Paranormal Soup, Howie Odell of Orion Effect, Shawnee Michael of Oshkosh Paranormal, Steve Foster, and Karen Wildenberg. And thank you, everyone, in the chat room as well, all our regulars. Uh, and Lucas. we love to see you guys every week. All righty. We have a killer show lined up for tonight. Uh, we're going to be discussing some of the oldest civilizations known to man, such as Mesopotamia, Sumer, Nineveh, Babylon, and how they have affected history, religion, culture, secret societies, mythology, and archaeology. And we'll also be discussing how this influenced things like the ancient astronaut theory, and how it suppressed information, uh, or how and suppressed information uh, from those notorious mortal powers that be. So tonight, it's someone Jen and I have been uh, wanting to interview for quite a while. His name is Matthew LaCroix. He's an esoteric historian and the author of The Illusion of Us. Uh, he'll help us connect the dots as he walks us through the fascinating topics of forbidden archaeology, uh, which is archaeology that has been covered up or suppressed, and esoteric knowledge or secret knowledge uh, that has its origins in man's uh, past. So shall we bring him up? Yes, let's do that. Hey, Matt, are you with us? Hey, I'm here. It's good to be here tonight. Thanks. Hey, thanks for coming on. It's my pleasure. Okay, well, why don't we, uh, before we jump into the ancient history itself, can you take a minute and tell us a little about yourself and how you ended up studying ancient mysteries from antiquity? Sure. <clears throat> so I was someone who was uh, deeply, uh, deeply loved of the outdoors and just... Um, 
getting out and just kind of pushing the limits of what I really could do. And along the way of doing that, it, it led me to have some pretty profound experiences that made me want to write them down and just maybe share them with others and maybe they would find it interesting. And it, it had nothing to do with ancient history or, you know, forbidden knowledge or anything. It was just about, you know, losing oneself in the wilderness and maybe finding oneself again. And that was kind of, and some of the adventures that co corresponded to that, you know, getting, being on the edge of, of your life in a, in a blizzard above tree line in the mountains or, you know, being chased by a, a riding bull moose or something. I had all these really kind of, um, enlightening events occur that started making me start to start to go down that path of writing. And while I was doing that, um, it led me to want to write things that were maybe more interesting. In, in that, and then I started to kind of go down a very fast moving path um, of, of questions that I'd had my entire life, but I, I hadn't found answers for. But I started to actually find those little links and those little keys that could kind of lead me and, and that's i think that's the biggest missing piece that most of society is kind of is kind of doesn't even know really exist and if they had that it would change their life and that's that's like a spark to some kind of uh, a connected piece of information that comes at the right time when they're ready where they can go that's amazing and they and then they want to know more and then and then of course that's what the whole term the rabbit hole really is because the rabbit hole essentially is when you start grasping certain pieces of information and unequivocally, unequivocally to, your, to, to you, your objective mind, you say to yourself, I'm being told something officially, you know, in school and books and various things like that. But really, it's not making rational sense with the, this kind of information I've stumbled upon. You know, looking at some of these ancient civilizations all over the world, like you mentioned Mesopotamia and Sumer. And in, in the places that where civilization blossomed and kind of began. So when I was when I was trying to answer some of these difficult questions, which which really started to me and with consciousness. And I know you're a, you do a lot of uh, paranormal talk on this station, and you do a lot of UFO talk and various aspects of that. And to me, it came to the very basic level of of what what, what is consciousness and what what was I? Was I my physical body? Or was I actually, you know, this the spiritual conscious side? And then, and then, of course, that ties into, you know, are there spirits here that are, you know, they they weren't able to then go back up and reincarnate and go through the, the process? Were they stuck here from some tragedy and, and various things like that? And that could be an interesting area to look into, too. But And, I, and so I went down the I, the road of what what is consciousness and, and what was our true identity? You know, was it the physical? And as I just started delving into that whole esoteric kind of secret knowledge of of what made us who we are, I it kind of started it started unfolding to this story, this story that connected back to the earliest cuneiform tablets we have, talking about you know these beings you know named Thoth and all these different these different gods of Egypt and Sumer and and the Greek gods and the Roman gods, and it's, it was strange that. There was all this knowledge that you could find if you if you knew where to look and if you looked hard enough. But for the general masses, most people were completely unaware of it, or they just thought it was ridiculous and, and not real. And that's kind of that's the problem is the the sector of society that is willing to be open and listen to a lot of this stuff is rather small, but growing all the time. So the the book, The Illusion of Us, is basically it's an understanding of the name is the illusion of us because it's the, it's this illusion of what our reality has become based on this the social conditioning of 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 you know generations upon generations of people through like a war mentality and, and these other these other means where we have we live in this illusion where we our perceptions of what we should be doing here and and everything around us has been so skewed that it's almost like living in a fishbowl it's living in a fishbowl of lies about who we really are, what our consciousness is, what exists in the universe, you know, what is the spirit, con all those things, they're not being taught, and, and, and yet they're known by the, echelon, the upper echelons of society. And I find that, you know, to find some of these uh, things that are, that are hidden from the masses or society, uh, it's, you know, uh, through my journey, 
I guess um, at some point I did realize that the information is out there and, and things that we call wonders or supernatural or just the unknown and unexplained, there are people that have figured out a lot of this stuff and, and much of it's ancient, just ancient knowledge that's been handed down through time from, you know, by, by the, what I call the moral powers that be. Um, and there's no doubt that there's conditioning. Uh, you know, there is establishment narrative in place, uh, which keeps things and beliefs suppressed. You know, and on the other hand, our personal research, like, you know, we've done probably over 150 interviews now with all kinds of brilliant minds. And uh, clearly, uh, that showed that there's an awakening going on. And we can see that in society. The unexplained... Uh, is losing its taboo, so to speak. So, uh, have you met more resistance overall or more acceptance from others? And um, you go right on that. Yeah, that's, that's a great point. Um, <clears throat> we are, you know, entering this kind of time of Aquarius where the energies are changing. You know, they've been singing, long, singing about it for years and people think it's a joke, but it really isn't. It represents these, this, a different zodiacal house of energy. And um, that's just kind of the surface of it. But to truly understand, you just have to have awake eyes and look around at what's going on. You know, this, this interconnected world we have on the internet where people all over the world can instantly meet one another and talk and share ideas and all of a sudden this strange you know built up nationality uh influence that we've always had of kind of you know compete against one another fight against each other and hate one another quickly breaks down during that and the same thing happens with information you know all of a sudden so many of these things that used to be very difficult to find like you said these 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 esoteric occult and the word occult just means hidden these secret, this secret knowledge, it has been very difficult to find because there hasn't been the availability of things like the internet, and people maybe wouldn't know what books to pick out or what to find, so they kind of would maybe stumble upon them, or just someone that would happen to just know the right place to look and that would help someone they know. So it was a very small sector of society that, that had this information because, because of that, when they came upon it, they got to the point where they had so much more information that everyone else just considered them crazy. And that's the same thing that's happening today, but on a much, a much, a much lesser level because we're seeing this kind of awakening that the Mayans prophesized about and all of these cultures talked about how we would reach this time of universal consciousness where our vi vibration would make it so that we would be no longer susceptible to just the narrative of lies, where we would kind of pierce through that veil, it's called. The Gnostics called it a veil of illusion. The veil of keeping people kind of entrapped in, in all the lies that have been built up. So, one, one of the things I write about in my book, I give an example of how society is like, is like a pot of water on a stove, you know, with a top on it. And it's you know, it's been it's been slowly warming warming up more and more and more, and more and more people are starting to kind of wake up and become uneasy, and and they're starting to see all these things that aren't making sense, and they're seeing all these strange government things and the things that are happening around the world, and they're starting to really question things. And so I like that, you know, that boiling water is is with the top that's that's trying to hold it in, trying to hold in all this information, and all these lies, kind of hold in what consciousness really is and what we really should be doing. Because if people realize that they weren't just some Darwinian evolved ape that kind of needs to just fight its way and accumulate as much wealth as it can and then die because they can't take anything with them, if if that whole thing is turned on its head where they then realize that they're an eternal spirit that just comes back through reincarnation and has to go through experiences. They'll realize that a lot of those things that we've been tricked by through materialism and, and wealth and all these things and greed, they've kind of just, they've been a way to just block us and, and give us that illusion of what we could actually be achieving. If, if people knew, if people put their time to good use, you know, instead of watching five hours of sports, what if they went in to go through an entire, you know, 
rabbit hole of learning about Sumerian cuneiform tablets and the stories that they that they contained or or whatever whatever interested them. It would. Find- the Starlight Lounge presents an evening with the Progressive Box. Oh, what a great audience! Let's dim the lights for this next one. Nope, oh, too much. Ah, there it is. Got to get things just right. Like Progressive's Name Your Price tool. Tell us what you want to pay, and we help you find coverage options that fit your budget. And now, the mood is right. Wait, the lights are back on again. Trudy, can you? And now it's completely dark. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Fundamentally changed our life. So that, you mentioned, that cauldron of water that's boiling with that top, where the where they, you know, where it's been hidden for so long and they don't want it to come out, you know, th- those of the high end of religion and w- the, the high end of those who kind of control this information, that pot is going to no longer, it's not going to be able to he- be held, held forever. It's going to explode. The top is going to fly off. And that's what we're seeing happening. We're kind of in the midst of that, the midst of that right now. And, and I, la- I do tell people that I don't think that the, that the truth, the explosion of all the information is going to happen in a trickle down effect because of the fact that it's been it's been held back for so long and it's built up and accumulated so much. I think it's just going to be an explosion of information that is going to come at some point. I just don't know how exactly that's going to happen. Right. I think it's it's definitely started. You know, um, on one hand, it, you know, it, it's, it's such an irony. On one hand, uh, that social media like Facebook. Uh, has connected so many people and so much information to be shared and people the cat's out of the bag people are waking up but on the other hand the cia created facebook to collect information (laughs) you know what i'm saying it's almost like they started a fire but it almost you know when i when i see things like brexit and you know trump the the trump thing whether you like them or not um these are these are people that are are voting differently than they have in a long time and uh, now what we're seeing, at least, you know, and, and is like suppression of almost like censorship in different areas. We're starting to see now in some of these different social media platforms. That's right. Isn't that scary, too, to think about? It's like 1984, isn't it? It is. It is. And, you know, my thought is that, uh, you know, I, I think that they thought they were so close that they could start giving us these tools that we can learn from. And they would be able to put, like you said, the, the lid on back on the pot. And I, you know, at this point, there are so many people that are, are waking up to this stuff that it may be too little too late. Um, but then again, you know, it's like, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Every time I, I, I think I can call something uh, as far as the future goes, you know, um, there are there are always variables and, and things come up and, and uh, I you know, that's, that's no, you're, you're right. It's growing all the time. Pe- people are waking up every single day. You're seeing more and more groups joining people, you know, if, and people are so isolated with this information, right? There'll be, there'll be a group of say 30 people just hypothetically, and maybe a, a handful, maybe two are, are awake. And what that term awake is, is when you start realizing that a lot of the stuff that is real is actually not what we're being told and that the narrative that we're given for things like our timeline of our of our our own origin story or <clears throat> or what we should be doing right now you know based on you know we, we spend the majority of our of our lives working just we, it's a very if you if you zoom yourself out if you, if you just take yourself out of the perspective of what we have right now if you kind of close your eyes and think here you have you have this planet earth with this incredible being that has we have seven seven chakras that perfectly match the visible spectrum of the of the of the light spectrum how can that be any kind of an accident you know we're this incredible being that really is enslaved with these ideas of what we should be doing so the, and that's why i call it the illusion and, and it's called the suppression and evolution of of human consciousness because we We've been so held back from our potential and from understanding who we are because if we knew people wouldn't want to work at Burger King or Walmart anymore because they would they would realize that they're wasting their lives that they're all their time and that all all of a sudden they're they're on their deathbed 
and they think back and they haven't done anything. They most people have just spent the most of their life watching TV and shopping. You know, they haven't ever crossed a great ocean and seen some new continent or scaled some mountain or or made an incredible painting that they're proud of that they could they could share or whatever it is. So much of our of our lives have been stolen by what we think we should be doing and what we should be doing with our time that this information when when people come across it, it it takes them down such a path that to others they just seem crazy. And that's I guess the most difficult thing of all. I agree. Uh, one of the questions uh, was, do you believe in the idea of uh, the elite dumping us down, whether it be fluoride or in our water or a moon matrix or anything in between? You, yeah, you look at something like most of the public drinking water in the United States. That's, this is what the hardest thing is about this. People hear the word conspiracy and they automatically start rolling their eyes because it's something they couldn't imagine. But yet, if you just sit down and look at the hard numbers and the real facts, you'll see it's, it's very strange to see that most of the public drinking water has, has, high, uh, has amounts of fluoride that are, that are neurotoxic to, to developing brains and brains in general. And, and it's dumped into more than 50%. Fluoride is dumped into more than 50% of all public drinking water in the United States. And, they, and the, the excuse that they give for it is to say that it helps clean teeth, which is true, except it's a neurotoxin. That's what they don't tell you. And, and it's not safe in any cases, and yet, it, look, it's in our toothpaste. But, but if you look at the back of the bottle, if it says right on it, toxic, if you ingest this, basically you'll die, go to the emergency room. And, but we're putting that in our teeth and in our mouths and and so the whole thing starts to make sense about this whole idea of this lid, this lid on consciousness and us being aware and us being aware of what's going on and the various means that are being used to keep us unaware by keeping us kind of keeping, keeping us sick, keeping us in a lower energetic state and in confusion and fighting, fighting over each other. So we're, we're always distracted by things like celebrities and all these things that are going on, all this fake news. When in reality, there's all these real things going on, like the desecration and destruction of all of these ancient sites all across Syria and Iraq. It, but at the same time, everyone just sees evil terrorists that are attacking all these locations. And, and it's all these, at the same time, all these things are happening, and we're all just batting an eye and not even, we don't even know what's happening. We don't even know what's existing. And we're losing all of the secrets of our ancient history. Like the board is being wiped clean so that the new narrative can be given by a lot of these, these powerful um, sides of like the church, Catholic and Christian church and a lot of these places. Whether or not you want – that's a difficult realization to come to if you're, if you're a religious person. But, but we have to look at the fact that, that if information is being protected and held back, you know, you – you want to just look at the, the fact that there's more from the, the greatest secret library right now that exists on Earth. It's a very simple little search on your computer. Look up the vaults underneath the Vatican, which basically hold the wealth of information that's been conquest all over the planet and exists down there. They have thousands and thousands and thousands of cuneiform documents, Mayan, Aztec, Inca. They have, they have documents cuneiform tablets and writings from all over the world stored in those vaults down there, not in a museum, in vaults that you have no access to. And that just shows you that where that's the, the – those who are in – that want – don't want people to know about this stuff because of the, the way that we're all you know, perfect in this fabric of society. Everyone is going to work and doing their thing and no one's, no one's making any fuss, and that's what they want. And that, but that's not – that's going to change. We both, we both know it's going to change. We're going to skip our commercial break, and we're going to keep moving along here. Okay. And we do have uh, some questions that were brought into Facebook, and I we haven't really had a chance to set this up yet. But sure. I sure. Yeah. Want... Sorry, I've been talking a lot. Go ahead. Oh, no, it's okay. It's, yeah, I mean, there's so much to talk about, you know. Yeah, um, it's huge, huge it's thing. Huge, right? So, uh, go ahead. Okay. So the first question is, who is Anki and and Will, and why are they significant to history? That's a really good question. Um, what a what a great opener. Um, Sweet. They're some of the keys to the puzzle. If you want to understand why the way things are the way they are now, those are the two names you most need to know 
of any pantheon god of history. And those two names you can follow all throughout the cultures of the world. I mean, if we look at something like the Greek god Poseidon, that was simply Enki. You know, and if you look at the if you look at his counterpart Zeus, that was simply Enlil. So who are these two guys? Well, if you, if you go back to the earliest records, and that's the most important thing we have to understand, is where are you getting your information from? Are you going to the most pure source of where it began? Or are you looking at something that was rewritten years later? To always know the truth, you have to go back to the source. The earliest evidence we possibly have, something that tells us the unbiased source story, or at least as unbiased as we can get. Um, and, th- and what that represents is cultures like the Sumerian and the Babylonian cultures, the earliest human civilizations that, that we basically have evidence for on the earth. And what they, what they did is they had this ingenious method of saying, we, we kn- we're smart enough to realize that based on all the influences we've had, that if we were to try to write anything down on paper or carve anything or whatever, it would erode and disappear. So they realized there's this genius method called cuneiform writing, where they could essentially etch in their stories and, and the information that they, that they needed to protect into stone, which would essentially last for thousands of years. And, and it's, that's essentially all we have that remains of what they told. And what they talked about was how here you have this, you know, we're told this Darwinian evolution where mankind can, came out of the jungle and then... They started, you know, picking up sticks and learned fire and started fighting each other. And then out of nowhere, they just developed these massive civilizations with writing and all these things. And the Sumerians, which are our first civilization that came out of nowhere, they say, absolutely not. That's, that's not what, we, that, what happened. We clearly state in all the masses of these cumiform tablets, so many different ones from something like you know, the Atrahasis, the Enuma Elish, or all these, the Sumerian king list, or there's so many different ones. And they basically tell us that all of these gifts of knowledge, of mathematics, and agriculture, and growing food, um, wine, brewing beers and wines, and all these different things, it all was lowered from heaven. And they always called anything out of earth heaven. And they talked about how these great gods came down and influenced and gave them all these things. And in those writings, they, they mentioned how there are these two brothers who are essentially always fighting, fighting back and forth because they're polar opposites of each other. And that's why our planet and our, these civilizations have always been fighting each other. And there's, there's been these, this constant war in this planet because it's represented these civilizations fighting to, to dominate and, and to control. And so these two brothers, their named, names are originally were Ea and Enlil. And, and Ea's name eventually became Enki, which is really fascinating if you break down the name and realize that Ki was what the Sumerians originally said Earth was called. So Enki became, it became part of his name. And so these two brothers um, were always battling one another and fighting because they disagreed. And and Enki was represented by the snake and the dragon, and he was always represented by higher higher knowledge. and And he was a geneticist, and he was he was the great wizard and magician side. And then you had Enlil, the complete opposite side, which was a war dominating side, represented by the eagle or the bull. And that's and though and those some that symbology represented by those two gods, you can see that all across the world fighting through these flags and, and various crests all over the world. So it's an amazing thing you, you realize that wait a minute, so these Sumerian gods that then became Babylonian gods and Roman gods and Greek gods and all these things represented by these symbols, they're still around today. It's still here today. And it's so it's an amazing connection that so those if you want to go back to the beginning the story of understanding these these ancient gods like Enki and Enlil, it's, it is absolutely fascinating because it, it's what explains how everything occurred here on the planet, the, this, this kind of forgotten timeline. Okay. So our next question is, what are the Emerald Tablets? It's another great question. Um, so I mentioned Thoth before, and these two families, these two rival families, these two brothers, Enki and Enlil. 
And those two brothers had sons, and they had daughters. And these various sons would generally follow the the mentality and and that you know that their father had. And so Thoth was the second born son of Enki, and he basically took on the image of what his father was. He was the you know the spitting image of his father. The master geneticist of understanding the highest human potential and you know very spiritual and connected versus Enlil had sons like Ninurta and various ones who you know were all about war and domination so Thoth Progressive presents Get Pumped inspiration to help you do insurance stuff Hey, are you just going to stand there and let people not give you credit for being a good driver? You deserve discounts on car insurance, and that's what Snapshot from Progressive is for. So why aren't you signing up? You need music to get pumped? Hit it! Drum solo! Ow, that hurts my fingers. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Snapshot not available in California, North Carolina, or from all agents. When he, when we had these civilizations that were being propped up and being taught different different teachings we had these this famous thing called the emerald tablets that was that was created by him and it was they're called the emerald tablets because they're they're made of this alchemical material that's supposedly indestructible and it was found in the bottom of the Teotihuacan pyramid you know if in the Aztecs and th- the, the amazing thing about that is Thoth's symbol was mercury the planet Mercury, but also the substance, substance Mercury. And last year or, or so, they just found in the bottom of that pyramid in the Aztecs a large amount of liquid Mercury. It, and so, it, what more telling example could you have of his legacy than that and the fact that the Emerald Tablets were found there? Secretly, long ago, we, we had those who wanted to protect this information. They were called things like pyramid priests. And, and druids and these these high end um, secret societies who who understood that there was this battle going on of either suppressing information or teaching it, and so Thoth wrote these you could call them almost like commandments or detailed information on these green tablets called the Emerald Tablets, and they follow through basically lessons of both what's happened here after. The Atlantis disappearing and, and the rise of, of Great Egypt and all these things. And then he also explains things like this: what happened with the, the darkness here. How did our duality become such a warring evil place? And he explains the entire totality of, of basically who we are and where we came from and what, and what happened. It's one of the most extensive um, bouts of information we have that really truly give us an understanding of, of who we are. If people just read the words in there, regardless of how they feel, if they think it might not be real or whatever, just read the words. You can read you can read the Emerald Tablets a hundred times and get something new every time you read it. They're so deep. They're, and they flow in this in this perfect poetic energy that is um, something you could just have to experience. So I highly recommend anyone to, to look in and read the words that, that Thoth left in the Emerald Tablets because they're truly profound. Everybody go read them after you read The Illusion of Us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have another question. Uh, what do you think of the irradiated Earth found in India, possible ancient nuclear blast site, uh, you know, with the, the glass and all that? Um, how does that correlate with the ancient texts known as the Mahabharata and the Ramayana? So, what we have these we have records all over the world that talk about how there were there were these nuclear wars in the past. As crazy as that sounds, but not not as close as we think. It's we have to separate these two time periods called the pre-diluvial and the post-diluvial. And what diluvial means is the is before the flood. So, if you look at geologic records, there was this disaster that occurred 12,500 years ago, and that's what essentially wiped out all these advanced civilizations. And, but before that was a time when, when there were, were, there were basically much higher technology than, than even we have now because it was you know, these great gods coming down, and, and, they, and there wasn't this distance that we have now. 
that's why there was so many great kings and, and and if you read the Sumerian king list they actually go through these insane long reigns of so many of these pre-diluvial kings thousands of years and it's and totally mind blowing for us to re- to consider because of the fact that our lifespans are pretty much capped at about 120 years and we we die because our our cell tellingers break down but the fact that to consider the fact that maybe that wasn't the case back then and and what we see is that some of these kings and these civilizations that are mentioned especially in the air, in the area of the Sinai peninsula over into northern africa and in, in over into india they talk about how there was the gods would decide to fight against each other and they would send nuclear use nuclear weapons against uh, cities and completely obliterate entire areas and leave behind massive areas of nuclear glass in places like the northern Sudan desert and areas like that. And, and we are told that's purely just an asteroid or meteor strike. And some of that is the case. But there also were ancient, ancient nuclear wars long in the past. And you can see evidence of that still in places like Mars, which is, of course, we're going to get off topic if we go there. But it, you, you see a signature basically left if nuclear weapons are ever used, they always leave a signature, a radioactive signature tell behind. All right, so we have a question for you from the chat room. Is not a lot of this miseducation and indoctrination coming directly from the government? Well, absolutely, and I think that's the hardest thing for people to wrap their heads around. People live, most people live in this comfortable little reality where they think, Oh, that you know the government's watching over me, and they're telling me the truth about everything. And you know the, what I read in school is that's the story. I got everything. You know, I'm, I got. It, I'm good. And but the the information that's being held back is is always it's at the high, highest level, and it's it's basically filtered down to the fact that we have a curriculum that's taught. You know, people just think that that you know how did that get to be that way? Why are we taught what we're taught? If you think and you, if you think about it that way. You say, okay, well, there's a curriculum that we're given with teachers, and they have to follow it. And if they don't follow it, they can be get into serious trouble, get fired, get lose their job. You know, all the work they did to become a teacher is essentially gone. So teachers have to teach a curriculum, and essentially they all teach the same thing, just with maybe slightly different styles. And that's handed down from the government because there's a narrative to follow. It's a predetermined narrative, too. So that if you ever have something that doesn't follow that narrative, saying, okay, this is a certain amount of thousand years old, blah, 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 it's got to fit into this, right? Well, what happens if it doesn't fit into that? You know, like, let's take a place like Gobeki Tepe, you know, an ancient site that we're just uncovering right now. And, and you look at that and we radiocarbon date some of these areas we're getting and we're finding that it's, a, it's, a, it's over 11,500 years old. Well, oops, wait a minute. The timeline we're given in schools says that at that time, we're just we were just simply nomadic and had no knowledge of, you know, monolithic building and, and understanding that. So, so then you say to yourself, "Wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. How can this site be this with the incredible sophistication? Be be supposed to, supposed to be during a time when we were, you know." banging on sticks and stuff. It doesn't make any sense. And the same time frame is given for the pyramids of Egypt, saying that they were built by slaves of Egypt, and yet we couldn't even build them today. They were at such sophistication that you can take things like the ratio of the Great Pyramid of Giza and get the circumference and ratio of the Earth and, and, and find direct connections with um, long vertical airway shafts that point to like Orion and Sirius and all of these different star constellations. We have to stop pretending that that human civilizations had are worse, you know, we have our our ego to overcome where oh yes, we are the ones who invented all this. We came up with the knowledge to create this. When in reality we were just given it all and and we took it from there and and in most cases we're not even responsible for most of the big monuments and the things we see. All right, so we have another question for you from the chat room. Science has estimated there may be 11 earthbound dimensions, and what could the effects of all of these earthbound dimensions on the planet? That's a good question. Um, 
this is another aspect of where I go into the book a lot and, I, and then why it's called the illusion of us. We do not understand dimensions and we don't understand, most people do not understand that we're in a third dimension reality right now, except there are dimensions above us and dimensions below us. And what makes that so interesting is that um, the next the next piece of writing I'm doing on the next book, it, it calls this the stage of time because this third dimension is where it all plays out. This is where the physical physical reality plays out right in this dimension. So that if you have if you have beings that are in higher dimensions or beings that are in lower dimensions, we think of them as you know, the terms like angels and demons, right? But those are just terms. What does that mean? Are, are they real or is that just some, you know, figment of our imagination? Well, it's very real because we can only, for the most part, or in this re- currently, we're perceiving reality as the third dimension. Well, there are also people who, you know, get deep into meditation or take a powerful psychedelic and all of a sudden they blow the top off that they go into the fourth and fifth dimension all of a sudden they're no longer in that physical third dimension anymore and they know it and once and once you get out of that it's very difficult to come back you you separate yourself and you realize that the the body that you have is just a vessel it's just a vessel for your consciousness and this experiment experience and then you all of a sudden start perceiving everything differently and then you realize that that whole perception is what this is all about to block us from perceiving things like that that's why everyone is if if you know they call people that go down that that study crystals and healing and energy they're just stupid hippies or whatever they are no they're the ones who are actually uncovering the next stage of our conscious evolution so it's it's amazing to consider what we used to make fun of which will actually be the most valued thing in the future exactly uh the difference between physics and metaphysics is what we have calculated and what we have yet to calculate um but basically once we you know once we figure it out, then it no, it's no longer metaphysics, it becomes physics. Right. You know, so when you're talking about things like astro travel and, uh, you, know, uh, you know, crystals and, and, and chakras and, and all this, um, that stuff is very real. And, you know, we have, we have the same philosophy. Uh, we're uh, spiritual beings, or we're not, we're spiritual beings having uh, a human experience, not human beings having a spiritual experience. Yeah. I see that so many times, and I, can, I still can mess it up. <laughs> but yeah, um, uh, we, we're starting to run out of time. And before we do, um, I want to ask, uh, what's in your future coming up? And um, also share any links uh, or... or Anything at all that you'd like to uh, share with everyone? Okay. Um, I keep trying to focus on writing the next book. I'm halfway through. It's called The Stage of Time. It talks about how you know the Earth and this physical dimension and humanity is part of this great struggle where it's being pushed you know, either direction and, 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 I, and how we're actually part of you – know, we, we're made to believe that – it's all empty out, you know, billions of galaxies and planets and suns are all just empty. And it's just this, it's, you know, there's just microbial life when in reality we're, we're, we're this civilization that is so, we're such a primitive conscious state that we're actually not ready for to know yet. And that's why we're kept in this, this battle of either controlling information or giving information. And that's, and that's why it's so interesting to see why the struggle of the the battle of the eagle and the serpent, what that represents throughout all the cultures all across um, history. So I wanna I wanna keep trying to write that, but I honestly get distracted a lot with with making content on YouTube. I I really love doing that. If anybody wants to go find me, I'm I'm at Matthew Lacroix, uh, L A C R O I X. I have a YouTube channel. I really like creating videos. It's it's a, it's a lot of fun, and some not everybody loves to read. And I know that's true, and some people don't have time. So I know a lot of people like to listen and or watch. So I, I try to spend time with both, um, but I tend to right now give a little bit too, a little bit more time with videos. But I but I want to 
I want to try to impart as much knowledge and that I can to help others. And, and if they're at the right place to understand that, then I, it feels great when I get feedback saying I helped someone or they, they connected something because of what, what I said. And I, and I don't want to pretend I have all the answers, but I do feel like based on a lot of the great, the great people that I've met and, and the experiences and the things I've learned, you know, there is a great deal to uncover if you know the breadcrumbs and the path to follow. And then you can decide where you want to go from there. But I think, I think that there's so much right in front of us. And unless you have some kind of a, a stepping stone guide on where to go, which is what I made the Illusion of Us book, this, this stepping stone guide to start with consciousness and try to understand what we are and then build out to what our timeline and our origins have been and, and what our struggle in this reality and what dimensions are. That's, I want to try to give this, this redefining of what reality is, not through my lens, but through the lens of what evidence really is and what these ancient cultures have been trying to tell us all along. And so that's what I try to, I want to bring uh, a place for people to then branch off and be able to be able to then go and understand because too, so many see all this and this big massive pile in front of them and they have no idea where to go and they don't know what's real. And so they just don't look at any of it. They just ignore it. And, I, and that's, so we need a stepping stone, a small kind of, you know, uh, lead us, lead us down the road, but not not throw it all at us at the same time. And and I think that's what I I try to try to provide in this. But um, but I really appreciate being on talking to, talking to all of you tonight. Um, it's been a really nice conversation. Yes, it has, and we enjoy your content very much. Oh yeah, um, very much so. Them videos are awesome. Thank yeah. you. That that really means a lot. I, I put a lot of passion into those. Yeah, and. and we love books. We love books, but the 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 videos too. Um, like I said, that's that's where we learned about you at first, and we've been fans ever since. Um, everybody, go check that stuff out, and check out his book, The Illusion of Us. Yeah, I put the link for his Facebook page in the chat box below, and there are also links to where you can purchase his book. And as Matthew said, just look up his name on YouTube. You guys will be blown away at some of the most awesome content he's made. Well, thank you, Jennifer. It was a really nice thing to say. You're welcome. So next week, uh, February 16th, we will have Amelia Pisano on, uh, psychic medium. She works on cold cases. Uh, so that will be awesome. And we'd like to thank Matt LaCroix for being such a wonderful guest. And we will have to have him back on at some time in the future. Oh, for sure. We definitely have to have you back for part two. All right, thank you very much. Yes. To the believer, the evidence is overwhelming. And to the skeptic, there will never be enough. Thank you. God bless you. Everyone have a wonderful weekend, and we'll see you here next week. Yes, thank you, and good night, everyone. <laughs>